Okay, so today we're going to talk about the bombings in Boston at the marathon. Go. Hey, welcome to the I Am Podcast, where we answer all the questions about spirituality and inner peace that you ever wanted to ask, and where we discover the secrets of humanity and divinity through a better understanding of both. I'm your host, Sean Webb. All right, so we have a listener topic that was sent in last week, and I liked it so much I needed to push it to the top of the queue because it is very, well, kind of time sensitive, and it is very poignant to the lessons that we've been talking about, especially the one dragging us back to center last week. First, my heart goes out to all of the victims of Boston and the marathon bombing. Um, we have nothing but compassion for those folks. It is very difficult that they're dealing with that kind of a situation. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to talk about it from a spiritual perspective today so that people might get a better grasp of what's going on, uh, of what caused the bombing, and what we can do regarding uh, terrorism moving forward. Because this is the reality of the world that we live in, and if we don't deal with it within our own minds, then we are going to be governed by terror rather than governing terror. So here we go. The reason that the bombing occurred, of course, if you've done the Body, Mind, Spirit 101 episodes in that course, you understand exactly what's going on and what exactly what motivated the bomber to be able to take those actions that he did. Um, obviously, the bomber has attachments of mind that can be plotted on an attachment map and at the point that they want to increase the value of those attachments, they start taking action that will do so. And so in this case, we had a couple of folks who were, I guess, homebrewed jihadists or uh, whatever it was that they attached to, and they wanted to defend their attachment to their religion or their mindset or their political affiliation or whatever it was. And so they decided to then create fear in the people and cause damage to the people around their immediate area so as to bolster their own ego and their own attachments. Not necessarily just who am I, but who am I and the things that I'm attached to. Because if you can create fear, um, that's a power grab. If you can create damage to other folks who are on the other side, that's a power grab. And it fits with everything that I talked about in the book, How Emotions Work in Humans and Computers. So if you want to check that out, it's on audible.com and you can get it for free if you try out our link, audibletrial.com slash I am spirituality. And so we understand why the bomber did uh, or the bombers did what they did and uh, setting off those explosives so as to bolster their attachments and bolster their own sense of self in comparison to what was surrounding them, which what they saw as an attack on their valuation and their sense of self, because all the people around them were living a great, happy life and supposedly oppressing their people, their attachments. And so they had to take action to defend those attachments and or increase the valuation in um, an anger move. Okay, so understanding the bombing, no problem at all. We all understand it. If you don't understand it, go listen to the first 25 episodes of the Body, Mind, Spirit 101 on the I Am Spirituality Podcast, and you will understand exactly why those guys did what they did. Now, moving on to the terrorism. Terror is a high level of fear. It's a high concentration, a high manifestation of fear. Fear has multiple levels. Fear at a very low level is nervousness and concern. And then maybe up in the mid levels, we have fear and being afraid. And then up in the higher levels, we have terror, horror. And the highest is, of course, panic, which after the bomb was set off in um, Boston, everybody flew into because they were concerned that other bombs were going to go off because two had already gone off near the finish line. And so terror is a process that occurs within our own mind. And thus it is something that we can have conscious control over because although fear, the process of fear is something that's processed in the limbic system and is not something that we can directly control, 
we can control the variables that go into creating fear. Because if you recall, we have the equation of emotion, expectation and our preference regarding ourself as compared to our reality as perceived or our perception. If these things don't match, it creates an emotional reaction. And in the specific case of fear, we have an expectation or preference regarding our sense of self. And if a threat to said sense of self occurs, then fear is the resulting emotion. And the closer that we are attached to our expectation or preference, or the more real that we perceive the threat, the higher the fear is. And so terror is usually the reaction of a threat to our very body, to our very existence, to our very attachment of identity, of what's going on and what's creating our world. Those things are being threatened to be taken away from us. And it doesn't only occur in uh, instances of potential bombings, but I mean, there are people that feel terror. There are people that felt terror when Obama was getting elected into office. They were sitting there on their couches with their guns on their laps type of thing because they were terrorized that someone who they were not attached to and who do not represent their sense of self was then taking control of the United States government, right? So terrorism is something that happens within us. And see, here's the real secret about terrorism. You can't fight terrorism with guns. If you're fighting terrorism with guns, you're lost. And you should not be leading anyone anywhere. Because the only place that you can truly fight terrorism is within your own heart. Because the process to create terror is right here. It is, you have an attachment to self, to life, to whatever ideas or ideals that you hold dear in your mind, and then you have a threat to those. And that's what creates terror. And so you have two ways to combat terror, which is the high level of fear. You disassociate with the attachments that you make and lower your expectation and or preference, and or you adjust your perception, you adjust your reality as perceived. You no longer you, you consciously decide not to be fearful about the potential uh, actions of a few who would cause us harm. I have a number of friends who do believe and who are active in fighting terror overseas and bringing the fight to them so that we don't have to fight it over here. And there is a lot of logic behind that uh, stance. But here's the other side of that coin. The military industrial complex doesn't want to put terrorists out of business because if they put terrorists out of business, they put themselves out of business and they have no reason to get more money from the government to go over and fight as mercenaries to be able to take out terrorism. So we go over there and we do just enough harm with the bullets and the bombs, not to kill all the terrorists, but to create more terrorists so that we can create more customers for the military industrial complex, because that's how we perpetuate the whole thing. We keep going. We don't, we don't just enough damage, but we're just enough incompetent to be able to blame it on mistakes or blame it on collateral damage or that missile accidentally killed those kids. And then all of a sudden you have a brand new group of terrorists who are creating uh, havoc for our mindset, basically. But here's where terrorism needs to be fought. Terrorism needs to be fought within your own mind. We cannot give in to terrorism. But on the same side of the coin, we cannot accept the fact that we are going to get rid of all the people who don't think like us and who don't like us. Terrorism can only be fought within the human mind and the human heart. And so killing people and shooting people in another country is not the way to end terrorism. The only way to end terrorism is to end terror and fear itself by breaking this process. And if you need help on how to do that and you think that's impossible, go back and watch the first 25 episodes called The Body, Mind, Spirit 101 because it lays out exactly scientifically how you can do that through self-introspection, meditation, and contemplation. It's that fucking simple. And if you would be one who would sit by and let others dictate the war on terrorism with bullets, then I think you need to take a reassessment of your position, a reassessment of your actions, and maybe take a little bit more control of the people you put into office. Because 
uh, I believe that we're in a self-perpetuating pattern right now of creating nothing but more terrorists and more terrorism. And we have a bunch of people who don't want you to know this. They don't want you to break this process because if you break the fear process, all of a sudden they don't get paid anymore. People don't want you to know about this. Governments don't want you to know how this works. The military industrial complex doesn't want you to know how this works. They want you to be afraid. But the only way to kill terrorism is to kill terror. Think about it. I love you guys. Talk to you next week. Peace.